always harvest season in the lab, harvest season for cell culture, that is. So cell culture is basically just where we grow cells in the lab. Um, we can grow them in its suspension, so like suspended growing in liquid, or a hero cell, so where they're actually growing on the surface of a plate or a dish. In either of these cases, these cells are going to be surrounded in media. So this food that is going to give them all the nutrients and things that they need in order to survive. But we don't really care about that media unless we care about like the cells secreting stuff into that media that we care about and we wanna measure. Typically, we're going after those cells. And so we need to isolate those cells from the rest of the media so we can do what we want with the cells. Maybe we want to break them open or lice them in order to say what, see what proteins they were making. Maybe we did something to the plate. We added a drug or something. We wanna see what happened. Um, maybe we want to purify a protein out of the cells that we had these cells make for us. So there's lots of cool stuff that we can do with these cells, but we need to get that pesky media away. And so this is where harvesting comes in. So if we're harvesting cells from suspension, often we do this by centrifuging. So we spin them down, draw the, cell, the, pel the cells, which are going to be heavier and denser and stuff, they're going to come down. And then we can just like pour off the media. With adherent cells, I talked about this more in the past and I'll briefly go over it again, but we have to somehow physically get them off of the plate. Um, if we want to actually like collect these cells to then like freeze down or to um, passage or something. Typically when we're talking about passaging, we're not really calling it harvesting, um, but there are other times when we want to collect cells in order to say freeze stocks of them to use later. Um, in that case, we can do things like add trypsin, which is going to like cut them off of the plate. You can think of one of those like combines, like going down the field and plowing those cells off, um, or centrifuge is more like, I guess, like shaking an apple tree and getting the apples to fall off. Other case, you're separating them from their food source. Um, so that's if you want to keep the cells. Um, other ways, easier ways, you can just like scrape them off if you're doing something like a lysate. So there are different ways to actually get the cells separated from the media. Um, and then sometimes you want to do a wash step. So we're trying to get rid of that media, right? So if we just like pellet the cells down, so we can just like pour it in a bottle, spin this down, I'll get more into the details, and then we get a pellet. If we just like decant the liquid, um, so just like pour off the media, there's still gonna be some liquid left in here. Maybe we don't really care about that, maybe it's not a big deal, but maybe it is a big deal. I mean, we're trying to get rid of it for a reason, right? Especially when we're doing like mammalian cell culture, and if the media has like serum in it, um, this is like fetal um, bovine serum, like FBS, there's all sorts of stuff in here because, well, and the cells are secreting more stuff into the media, even if you don't have all that stuff in there already, but there are like proteases, um, so protein chewers and nucleases, um, nucleic acids, so DNA and RNA chewers, and so there's all this stuff in there to protect the cells because the stuff in the cells is going to be protected by the cell membrane. But when those cells lice, so when you like break open the cells, well now they're gonna be exposed to all that other stuff. And so we want to prevent them from lysing, from breaking open, and then making sure that when they do break open, hopefully when we want them to, um, so we can promote this like adding detergent, so like soaps and stuff. Um, when we break them or sonicating, there's various mechanical methods as well, um, more on that in another post. But basically when we break them open, we want them to be coming out into a safe environment. And so we can both wash the cells as often with like PBS, phosphate buffered saline. Um, and we can also like resuspend the cells in a in a liquid um, that has like protease inhibitors. So we're actually preventing those protein chewers from doing their job um, if those cells were break, to break open. So this wash step is often like optional, more important for like mammalian cell culture. Um, and y you can do different things. Um, so once you basically, you, s you somehow get your cells, so you like spin down your cells. I'm gonna talk most about suspension cells. Um, but the same sort of thing applies for once you've collected them off of the plate. Um, so you have some sort of cell pellet and now you need to, so you take out the, the, the growth media and now you're going to um, potentially wash it, uh, potentially not wash it. Um, if you're washing it though, you're repelleting it back down to get and then pouring off the wash media. Remember to be really, really careful when you're decanting, so when you're pouring off that media. Um, so sometimes I like to like check against the light, like hold the bottle up against the light um, to see if the pellet is like how loose and floppy it is. If it's really floppy, you might want to pellet it a little longer. Um, so typically I do somewhere, I do around 10 minutes. Um, for smaller volumes, I might do like five minutes. Um, and yeah, you just wanna make sure that you're not going to pour off the pellet when you're trying to just pour off the media. Um, you can always pour off most of it and then use a pipette to help get off the last of it.
Um, in this case, and now you have some options because you have a pellet. You can freeze the pellet as it is. You can resuspend that pellet in the media that you're going to lyse it in without the actual lysis stuff. Um, so you can, if you're doing some sort of mechanical lysis, say, you can do it at everything except for, so you have the protease inhibitors and everything, but then you don't do the actual lysis until you then um, add or you mechanically lyse it or you add some sort of um, agent that's going to help break these cells open. Um, but so you can resuspend these cells in a new liquid is the basic idea um, and then freeze that resuspended liquid or use that as like use it fresh. Um, for longer term storage and if you don't know what buffer you want to use when you're doing the lysis you can actually just freeze that pellet as it is. So this is one of the reasons why it's helpful like when you're doing the wash step. So when you're doing the initial um, pelleting step basically you might think like oh I have a liter of media that's going to be like a ton a ton of cells but really it's just going to like it probably will just like about cover the bottom of one of these um, of one of these um, bottles and so in order to you, now you have a volume that can fit in a smaller container, like maybe a 50 mil conical. Um, and at that point, a 50 mil conical, well, that's something you can freeze. But like one of these tubes is going to be, well, I mean, I guess you probably could freeze it, um, but then it's going to take it out of commission for the rest of the lab. It's going to take a bunch of space in the freezer. Um, and so you can scrape the pellet out of there, um, but it's easier to just do it in the 50 mil falcon at that second, at that wash step. Um, and then you can just pour off the liquid or, or aspirate off the liquid and use it like that, um, freeze that pellet. Often when you're freezing a pellet, you want to know how much of the pellet you have. Um, so weigh the, weigh the two before you add the cells for the wash and then afterwards um, reweigh it, um, subtract the difference or if you zeroed it with the two before and no one else used the centrifugion before and messed up your zero, um, then you can calculate how much of the weight of the cells you have and that can um, dictate how much of the lysis buffer and stuff that you're going to add later. Um, so you have the options of wash step, um, then using after the wash, um, you can just freeze the pellet as is, you can resuspend the pellet and freeze it, you can resuspend the pellet and use it, um, and you can skip the wash step and resuspend it and freeze it or, or just freeze the pellet and you can use it. So it's going to be more stable if you um, don't resuspend it. And for like long term keeping and for long term keeping you want to keep these things in like the minus 80 degrees um, freezer and that's going to help. Um, so what we care about is we want to make sure that we want to keep everything kind of just like frozen as is and we don't want these cells to break open. Um, and so hopefully when they break open they're not going to be at least exposed to the proteases and all that stuff if we have um, washed it and if we have if we've resuspended it if there's protease inhibitors in the media. So when we're doing the washing too we want to make sure that we're not breaking open the cells and so one of the reasons like free we, we might freeze the pellet even if we're going to use it right away is because the freezing and thawing especially if you don't have some sort of cryoprotectant like glycerol that's actually going to help like break open these cells so lyse them and we're typically at this point we don't want to lyse them but later if if our goal is to lyse them then the freeze thaw is going to actually help us lyse them but we don't want them to lyse before we're actually ready to lyse um and so we have the kind of like backup safety net um getting rid of the media and adding protease inhibitors, um, but we also need to be careful. And so this is going to be, uh, especially, you, this is going to come into play when you're dealing with like mammalian cells, which are more fragile, and bacterial cells, which are more hardy, and they have like cell walls and stuff, which are gonna make them harder to break open, which can be actually like a problem when you're actually trying to break them open. And these cells are even worse. I've never worked with them, but I hear that they're really hard to break open. But anyway, so in this wash step, we want to prevent them from breaking open and we want to protect them. And so when we're washing them, we're not just like washing them with water. Water, it has like nothing dissolved in it. And so there's this thing called like osmotic pressure. And so basically what happens is that when you have like nothing dissolved in water, it's like there's a ton, a ton, a ton of water and not much of other stuff. And then inside of your cells, although there's still a ton of water, there's a bunch of other stuff too. And so if that other stuff can't get out of the cells, what's going to happen is the water from outside is going to start coming into the cells um, on a net basis. And this is gonna cause the cells to swell and potentially lice and we don't want that. So that's one of the reasons why we do this wash um, in like this phosphate buffered saline. So saline salt, it's got a bunch of salt and it's got the pH um, nice and balanced. So it's gonna keep our cells happier. We're not gonna keep it in this long term or anything. We're just doing this wash. So basically what you do is you take the cell pellet, you resuspend it in this wash liquid. So typically a lower volume. So you might start with like a liter of cells. Maybe you're gonna wash it with like 15 to 20 mils of PBS. Um, so what you can do is you can just add the PBS, um, measure it out, 
at it, pipette up and down. If you have a bacterial pellet, it's probably gonna be a lot firmer than one of the pellets for the mammalian cells or for the insect cells. Um, and so you might need to use like a vortex um, to, don't go too vigorously though, because remember the bacteria can take more stress, but not like a ton, a ton, a ton. Um, and so you can vortex it to help resuspend it and then pipette up and down a lot of times. You wanna make sure you're really resuspending it because you don't want all the, like, the stuff that's kept in between like the little bits of cells um, to be an issue. Um, so pellet up and down and up and down, move it into your smaller tube and now you can recentrifuge it. Um, and then remove that media and freeze the pellet or um, resuspend the pellet, do whatever you want with that pellet. Um, and so when you're doing um, when you're doing those spins. So bacterial cells are going to be smaller than like mammalian cells and insect cells. You can remember this because, well, like our intercellular organelles, um, so like our mitochondria or in plants, their chloroplasts, those actually come from like swallowing like a really, really, really ancient um, precursor to like bacteria. And so they must, these, our cells must be like way bigger than those bacterial cells. As a consequence, it doesn't take as much um, centrifugal force to pull them down. So it's easier to spin them out. And so we can use lower speed. So we're typically using somewhere between like, if we want to actually like keep the cells viable, say if we're trying to um, make cell stocks of them or just like passaging cells, we'll do something like 100 to like 300, maybe 500 G um, with, and if we're trying to like spin them down to collect them for like lysate or that sort of thing, we'll typically go to like a thousand, maybe 1200 G. With bacterial cells, we need to be going in, we're go typically going around like 4,000, 5,000 G in order to spin these down because these are smaller. It's going to take more of a force to pull those bacterial cells um, out of the suspension because you have buoyancy and you have friction and all this stuff and these bacterial cells are smaller so it's going to take more to pull them down um, and so we're going to be spinning them at faster speeds but we still don't want to go super duper fast speeds because what's going to happen is then your, your cells are going to like bang into each other and bang into the wall and you create the sheer stress um, that can actually break these cells open and we don't want to break them open at least not yet later we'll let them break open but we want to break them open under our terms um, when you're doing the resuspension and the washing stuff, um, keep your tubes and your bottles on ice. Um, those nice big like autoclave bins work well for that, as well as they make um, like rectangular ice buckets that can be really good, so you have plenty of room. There are also methods that like use filters, like vacuum filter type of things, um, to filter the cells out and like keep them on the filter and then the liquid goes through and stuff. I've never used them, but they do exist. I've always just used centrifugation. Um, so that's the basics of how you would harvest a suspension cell culture. With adherent cell culture, the same type of thing, like you still can do, you still do the wash. Um, you can still resuspend. Typically you're not freezing these for as long of a term type of thing. You're so often you're using it like as is. So you might do your lysis actually in the dish. Um, so you be basically wash it while it's still attached to the plate. You can just like take your PBS, like so aspirate off, so like pipette off or use one of those aspirating tip pipettes to like suck off the media, add some PBS, a few mils, um, suck that off and then um, add your lysis buffer and actually lyse it on the plate um, and then like scrape it off and pipette it off or whatever. Um, and so that makes things really, really easy. You can also trypsinize it. Um, so that's what I was talking about before. Here you still need to do a PBS wash, but you're using a special PBS. You're using a PBS that is like minus, um, minus calcium and minus magnesium. So you don't just add trypsin. So trypsin is the protease. I know we talked about proteases as being these things we wanted to avoid. Um, but here the proteases are actually going to help cut the cells off of the plate and off of their connections to one another um, because those ha they have like protein mediated connections and so the trypsin is going to go and break the those. These proteins that are doing these connections are like cadherins um, which are calcium dependent adherins so they use calcium. EDTA is a chelator, it's a metal hider, it bites down on the metal and hides it. Um, so what's going to happen is if you add EDTA, it's going to help weaken those interactions so that trypsin can get in there and cut it off. So that's why we use PBS without um, calcium and magnesium in that case. But when we're typically just doing the cell washes for other things, we're using the ones with the, um, with the PBS, I mean with, the, with those cations, those positively charged metals that, the, um, that those cations use. Um, and so in the case you do that wash, so you remove the media, you do the wash, you add your trips in EDTA, you give it a few minutes in the incubator, what's gonna happen is you'll start to see the cells detach. Then you add your serum media, which has inhibitors of the trypsin, 
um, and so then it's going to inhibit that and then you spin them down um, and then you pour off that media and then you can do the wash if you want um, you can resuspend them you can do whatever the heck you want with them um, but yeah so it's more complicated to actually get the cells off the plate but you can do the washes and stuff without having to spin anything down um, it's only after you actually collect them off of the plate that then you spin them down so typically we, we often are doing this just because we want to split or passage the cells so basically dilute them into more media because they started to like overgrow the on the plate so you don't want them to get more than like 80 to 90 percent confluent so there's still space for them to grow on the surface of the plate um, or else they'll start getting mad and like excreting toxic stuff and stop growing nicely and things like that you don't want. So we don't really typically talk about that as harvesting, um, more just like splitting or passaging, but we can actually harvest these cells um, if we want to do something like break them open, do a Western blot, see what's expressed, um, maybe put them through some sort of like flow count. I don't know, I don't do that sort of thing. Um, but various things that you could do with these cells. Um, and so basically anytime you're collecting the cells, you're calling it like to do something with them other than just like plate more of them or grow more of them. Um, we typically call this harvesting. Um, and yeah, so we can also harvest, we can keep those cells instead of like using those cells for an experiment right now or whatever, or freezing them. We can freeze them for like long term to actually like, and just like put them in hibernation rather than like actual freezing. So when we're actually freezing these pellets and stuff, we typically do like flash freezing and liquid nitrogen, um, just like freeze them as is. Um, when we're doing this like cryoprotectant, if we actually want to like just put these cells in hibernation and use them later, we add some sort of cryoprotectant like glycerol or DMSO. DMSO often in the case of these um, mammalian cells. Um, and I did a post on this before. You basically put them in this like special cooler that's gonna like cool them down slowly and there's all this stuff that you do to try to protect them um, so that you can actually wake them up again. Um, and all of that, you really, really wanna prevent it from breaking open. Um, and yeah, so that's the basics of harvesting cells and happy harvest season, whatever time of year it is, because it's always harvest season in the lab.